Today on Multi-GP News, pilots bringing their A-game to the finals track as they battled it out for their chance at the top spots in the 2B regional qualifiers. Plus, talk about a family affair. We'll hear from some of FPV's father and son duos who are using drone racing as the ultimate bonding experience. Then, he's a former firefighter turned into a full-time drone racer, and she's in law school but still finds time to fly. We'll introduce you to a couple who some call the power pair of FPV. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Thomas. And I'm Hector Puente. All this and much more on today's Multi-GP News. Live from the Multi-GP headquarters, this is Multi-GP News with your host, Chris Thomas. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get started with our top stories in this week's Morning Quad. MultiGP has now released the micro and tiny up classes for flyers to enjoy and take part in this year. These spec classes mainly focus on a pilot's skill rather than their equipment. They're very affordable. The tiny up class specifically offers a quad that's safe, fun, and affordable, and it's approachable by all skill levels. These aircraft are very small and light and resulting in no property damage when they crash. Now the micro class also offers a small yet quick aircraft. It's very capable. The quad is very quiet and can be flown indoors or outdoors, making them perfect for backyard competition. For more details on these classes, log on to multigp.com and click on the League Info tab. And keeping with the mini theme, Emax is soaring high with their new Baby Hawk. The plug and play combo includes a 25 milliwatt VTX camera combo, brushless motors, plastic body, motor guards, Emax flight controller and ESCs. The complete build with recommended 2S LiPo weighs in under 90 grams, and they're currently in stock on the Emacs website for just $99. We've officially reached the sixth episode of Multi-GP News, and I'm happy to say we've got nothing but positive feeds, uh, maybe nothing I don't know about but positive. pretty positive feedback from you guys so far. With that being said, let's keep this show on the road. Our goal is to reach 10,000 subscribers on YouTube by the end of the year. I don't even have that. Remember to like, share, and most importantly, get everyone you know, people you don't like, your grandma, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll work around the clock bringing you the most up-to-date news in FPV, and all you have to do is click the subscribe button. There's also a little bell. Click that, and you'll get notified whenever new episodes come out. We'll be tracking our subscriptions, so once we near the 10,000 mark, expect to see some giveaways in cash and prizes. And the details of the 2017 Multi-GP Spec Class Racing is officially here. All components will be voted on by the pilots via an online poll that is administered and controlled by Multi-GP. After the polling is completed, all results will be released and made public. And once the voting has been completed, the number one and two choices will be the official components for the 2017 Multi-GP Spec Class Racer. Want your favorite product to be on the ballot? Tell your preferred vendor to contact us at sales at multigp.com. Now to your weekly regional series update. We had a big turnout for the annual mini fest held here by the Brevard Multirotor over the weekend. Pilots from all around the Sunshine State gathered to race at the finals track for a shot at the top five spots in the Division 2B regional finals. Multi-GP news reporter Paul Nurk Nurkula has the recap. The Brevard Multirotors recently hosted the 2B Regional Qualifier and the second annual Minifest at the X-59 Flying Field in Melbourne, Florida, the home of Multi-GP. Over 40 pilots from all over the Sunshine State brought their all to the line. Man, the races are going good. We're having some good competitions and fast guys. Uh, three guys have broken into the five lap uh, for the in the two minutes, so... I think uh, once uh, pilots around the country start flying this track, five laps is going to be what the really fast guys are getting. Uh, there is going to be a couple of guys on the water that might get the sixth lap, but it's going to be tough, but I think it will be achievable. So it's a fun track, super flowy. Everybody that, that has flown it has loved it. Uh, so I'm excited to race it for the, uh, for the regional championship coming up in a few months. The event, featuring three days of FPV racing, wing flying, camping, food, and a whole lot of fun, was put on by spouses and co-chapter presidents Greg and Heather Schultz. Well, today we're here at Brevard Multirotor X59 with Minifest, it's our second annual event, and also a regional qualifier for Region 2B. Um, we've been planning since November. Uh, we had a lot of help from the people at Atmospheric Adventures. Uh, a lot of different 
brain sessions trying to put it all together and I think it's come together pretty nicely. We had a lot of help from our safety officer, Mike, our vice president, Hefty, and Chris Thomas. This course featured the official multi-GP regional finals track with the actual gates and flags that will be sent out to all chapters hosting the finals in their region. The dive gate has been updated and now features a slight angle to reduce crashes and bolster competitive racing. I'd have to say it's awesome. You know, it's probably one of the better tracks that I've flown. The course is really fast if you know what you're doing. And sometimes you've messed up and it really messes you up. The course begins flying through the start finished gate and to the far end for a split S heading back 180 degrees onto the field. You immediately follow it up with a switchback slalom of four flags. The next gate is an over under over under hurdle style gate with a slow sweeping 180 back into the towers. You go up through the top tower fly all the way to the dive gate. After doing a 180 turn, climb to the second height of the tower and proceed on to the next gate. Next, pilots face a long straightaway, followed by a right hand climbing turn to another tall gate. Guys, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. We're running out of daylight, bring it in, bring it in. To qualify, pilots took their best three out of five rounds. Based on highest points, the top five who hadn't already qualified moved on, including Davis, Davis D. Drake, Jordan, Sheepers, Smith, Nelson, Cruel, Aquino, Anthony, Nubs, Rosado, and Tommy, Tommy Pizzino, Pizzino. Feels great. <laughs> I mean, uh, I came in here thinking that I, was only, I wasn't even going to be at the top 16. To be honest, I, I did not expect to even come uh, fourth, I think. Fourth and overall second with the qualifiers behind Davis D. Only a few pilots posted five laps in a heat, with Chris Flycooks Bevan the only one to do it twice. Um, it was just neck and neck. There was Navi Hawk. There was... Uh, our boy over here, Mason, and we were just pushing so hard, so hard. It was back and forth, and I felt like I had it right at the last second. I goosed it, and it was just a little bit too much. I finally hit a gate today. It took me all day until the very last race to hit a gate, but I sure as heck did it. <laughs> but uh, what a heck of a time. Um, I've never been out to a meet like this, and I guarantee I'll see you again next time. Next, there was a second round of racing for cash and prizes. The top 16 pilots from the qualifier competed in a double elimination tournament, which only increased the intensity of the race. Yes! Oh my gosh! Yeah! Good job, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm really shaking right now. I'm shaking. The final heat came down to Abel Navahawk Amalgar, Chris Flycooks Bevan, Mason Hyper FPV Lively, and Anthony Nubbs Rosado. Sixteen-year-old Mason took the top prize of five hundred dollars, sponsored by Atmospheric Adventures. Not only did he take first place, but set the fastest lap in the race with a twenty-four point nine four. Pilots, make sure to keep an eye out on this young gun, as we're sure to see him at the Multi-GP National Championship. Oh, it's great to win, especially after taking a loss to probably what I think is my biggest competitor, Abel. And to come back and win today feels great. As we get closer to the 2017 Championships, we'll give you weekly updates on chapter standings and regional qualifiers right here on Multi-GP News. Coming up, the goggles don't fall far from the tree. We'll talk to some father-son duos who are turning drone racing into a family affair. Plus, celebrity athlete couples are a dime a dozen, but FPV couples are definitely a rare find. We'll introduce you to a duo who some call the power couple of drone racing.
Now, the saying, like father, like son, couldn't be any more accurate than it is with some of FPV's father-son relationships. This week, we'll introduce you to a few pilots who share that dynamic and are using drone racing as the perfect bonding experience. MultiGP news reporter Frank Realize Maynard has more in the story. One of the big reasons that I'm still flying today is because he wouldn't let me stop and vice versa. FPV drone racing has become a sport many families can enjoy. For some, it's a hobby, and for others, it's another way of bonding with their kids. Meet some of FPV's father-son duos, who are using the sport to get closer to one another like never seen before. Yeah, like, because he always, when I'm racing, he keeps, he keeps me calm, because when I, when I get more excited, I start moving the sticks too much, and then I crash, so then he, he, he spots me, and he, um, keeps me calm. Most of these fathers introduced FPV racing to their kids, taught them how to use the radio, and stood by their side, helping them master the art of drone racing. They may have had the upper hand at the sport at one point, but now their kids are getting faster and better, even outdoing them in many of the competitions. Uh, <laughs> as much as I don't want to admit this, <laughs> we're not in the same ballpark anymore. <laughs> you know, as much as I hate to admit that, it's, I have to, I have to give it to him. I mean, when we race, he plays with me. I'm gonna put it to you that way. <laughs> there is no competition. <laughs> Now, uh, I, he, he's the one that actually started the drone racing. Uh, we got the old Diatone 250 quads. Um, Hobby King, we, you know, we built them all up. Uh, we went in out the backyard, flew around, a lot of fun. Uh, uh, he did that for about maybe a month or two, and then I started to get into it because, you know, it felt a lot like what I'm normally used to, which is... Uh, I had to make him get off the computer and do something else, and this, this kind of brought us together that he's to the point now where he's almost as fast as me so you know I, I want to be faster than him now I don't want him to beat me so uh, now it turns it's turning into a constant battle of who can beat who. After interviewing these father-son duos it's safe to say they both help each other out. Most of the fathers are pros at the building process whereas their kids have dominated the racing aspect of the sport. In simple words they're an unstoppable team. He's doing most of, he's doing the building. He's still teaching me how to build. Yeah, but he does know how to do a few things. He learned how, how to, to solder. He's learned how to solder. Excuse me. He's uh he knows all the components on the quad. He knows how to change out a motor. Things he is better than me at, like building and such, he does very much hold over me. <laughs> because he can. He's he's definitely a much better overall builder than I am. I'm more build for functionality, but his boots look pristine. Not only does FPV racing help these pilots with hand-eye coordination, but it's a way some of these parents can get their kids to improve their academics. For this duo, better grades means more flying time. His grades and his behavior in school is definitely a key issue to him flying. He doesn't, he happens to be one of the most brilliant kids in his class, but he also has a, uh, he, <laughs> he likes to uh, clown around a lot as well. So. Um, Having FPV there uh, really helps him settle and focus in class and reward him at the end of the day and end of the week to, uh, to do it. So uh, it, it's definitely helped him big time. FPV racing has become a learning process for these father-son duos. In most cases, their kids have learned from them. But now the tables have turned as they're getting some pointers from the young guns themselves. I caught up to him in skill level pretty fast. And then after a while, once we got the new quad set up, I just kind of passed him. But he's still behind me. He's still really close behind me. It's just going to be all about him creaming me all the time? <laughs> I'd, I'd, say, I'd say that I'm faster, but he's more consistent than me. Um, I crash more often than he does. I crash a lot more often. Well, I can say something about that. He, you know, he used to crash a lot more than he does now. And when it comes to FPV racing, one thing is for certain. The pilots who have their fathers by their side do better in races and are definitely a force to be reckoned with. From young to old, these father-son duels have created an ultimate bond that will last them a lifetime. It's actually helped us bond even more. Uh, he comes out and he set, helps me set up the tracks and uh, so it does what it takes to uh, to get ready for race day. Um, and he looks forward to race day more than I do sometimes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's helped our relationship quite a bit. 
I've gotten di- really discouraged at at times and just was ready to roll out, but uh, he kept me in it and kept me pushing. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't be here without him. It's like this. He's 20 years old. This is the only time in his life that he can actually do what he wants to do. If I can support him, I'm going to support him. Yeah. So give it a shot. Go for it. If you do it, you do it. If not, then you regroup. Now, researchers say fathers are just as important as mothers in their respective roles as parents, and they are more likely to encourage independent thinking in their children, which will benefit them well into adulthood. Now, some call them the power couple of FPV, and others say the two bring a unique dynamic to the drone racing world. We'll introduce you to two-time MultiGP champion Sean Taylor and his wife, Tang Ma, who say drone racing has brought them closer together. Everything outside of PV, like I've learned so much from her. As she, she's able to keep me calm. You may know him as one of the fastest pilots in FPV racing, and she's been flying for nearly a year but can shred a course like no other. Meet Sean Night Fury Taylor and his wife Tang, better known as Junebug FPV, the duo who some call the power couple of drone racing. Colorado versus New Mexico. Dun, dun, dun. The synergy between the two is very strong, and one thing is very clear. They help each other succeed both on and off the racetrack. My very first practice, that I, or my, my first qualifier, rather, that I, uh, I went out and did, I think I bounced off of just about every single gate that was on the course for some strange reason. This is after having 20 battery packs, but flying pretty good. I just completely freaked out for whatever reason, and it was a terrible first qualifier for me. And, I was, I, I was shaking literally an hour after that, that first qualifier. It was such a, such a mess. And uh, I, didn't, I, I just kept saying there's something wrong. I feel like there's something broken inside of me. Like I was just so nervous. And, and she just sends me a little sweet, innocent text. <laughs> just like an inside much, joke. Yeah, like, just how much yeah. she loves me. Have fun, baby. It's no big deal. Just, just have fun. And it's things like that. Like she is my mental rock. Although you see Night Fury as the number one pilot in almost every race, Junebug FPV is making her mark in the sport. She's had some hot laps on the UTT1 track and qualified for the 6C Regional Finals in Prescott, Arizona. Plus, the two are set to compete in some big races this year. And I'm going to be going to Georgia to fly with some more buddies of mine, and actually some people I haven't met before, uh, filming some stuff. Uh, it'll be coming out. Yeah, yeah, it'll okay. be coming out pretty soon. Then we are going to be off to Shanghai. China. It's a big race, it's a big, it's a big international race in Shanghai. Being married to one of the fastest pilots in the world has surely helped Junebug FPV's skill set, but does she ever challenge him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup? This one is, is a losing battle. It's not a losing battle. It's she has, so she's in law school. She cannot practice. All I do is practice. If she practiced near as much as I did, it'd be trouble. It'd be trouble for me for sure. For the two, FPV racing gives them an opportunity to actually enjoy the sport for what it is, without getting angry at unexpected crashes and setbacks. It's hard to stay mad when you are when you look around and realize what we're doing. Like we're not in the office, we're not in a cubicle, we are not. Life you know, could be much worse. Yeah. Now it's no secret that Sean Taylor puts in hours of practice time, but does he really fly a hundred packs a day? No, that was a period when he was trying out a hundred packs a day, and he thought that was the only way he could improve at the rate he wanted to. And we realized after two weeks of him doing that that uh, maybe everyone's different, but the way he learned, and even the way I, I learned, that our brain maxed out after a certain amount of hours um, you kind of have to have time to let it simmer let new information new skills um, it's like soup you know you have to let it cook let it simmer you can't just keep adding new stuff in it although the pair will be attending a handful of events this year one race is sure to get all the fpv pilots excited i think we may be holding our own regional qualifier uh, so everybody please watch out for that and i guarantee you you have never flown a track like what I'm going to put together for you. I promise you. Now, Junebug FPV came in fifth at the regional qualifiers in Prescott, Arizona over the weekend. We'd like to extend her the best of luck at the regional finals. 
If you would like your chapter featured in an upcoming episode, please contact us at news at multigp.com. Also, this goes out to all of our MultiGP media ambassadors. If you want your work featured in our newscast, make sure to upload all your photos and videos to our Google Drive with your name and a quick description of the event. Now coming up after the break, time to demolish a quad. Something clean It's hard to hide from the thrashing nights Nobody cares about a junkie's dream More of a sucker than a fiend It's hard to turn down a smile And that's all the time we have. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Chris Thomas. And I'm Hefty Puente. Thanks for joining us, and see you next time on MultiGP News. If you like this video, press the like button below, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in being showcased in the next episode of MultiGP News, please contact us at news at multigp.com.